Growing up in South Africa, I never really had to deal with winter. The winters there can be cold, but they're not this sort of really steady, really cold kind of winter that you get in Europe. There are some really cold days and, and the mornings can be really cold, but in general, things warm up throughout the day and the temperature nudges into the double digits and things aren't so bad, especially if you can choose when you're training. So for me, arriving in Europe and experiencing a real winter was a proper eye-opener. My first real winter experience was arriving in France to my new team and joining them for their first training camp. We had a weekend of training lined up and the weather forecast was between two and four degrees centigrade and strong winds for the whole weekend. I had never in my life ridden in temperatures like that. So I had no idea how to dress. So when it came time to go training, I put on all the cycling kit I had I put on a long base layer, I put on a long sleeve fleecy, fleecy cycling jersey and then I put on my big team winter jacket over the top of that. That day was the coldest I have ever experienced on a bike. And it wasn't because I wasn't wearing enough clothes, it was because I was wearing way too many clothes. So I thought I would share what I learned there and how to dress for what is a rapidly approaching winter. What I learned in France that day is that sweat is your biggest enemy. I was dressed so warmly that whilst I was riding I was getting hot and so I was sweating and making each layer wet. And then as the ride went on and with the wind and the descents and stuff, each wet layer was just making me so cold. So that is the key for all winter dressing. Manage your temperature and sweat as little as possible. When you're dressing to go out riding you need to think about two things, temperature and variability. The temperature is just the outside temperature. The variability is what makes it really difficult. If you're on just a sort of long, flat, steady ride in a, in a really similar temperature all day, it's super easy to dress for. But if you're going to encounter variable temperatures, that makes it tricky. What makes temperatures variable will be like going uphill when you're experiencing your body really heating up, or when you're descending with the wind chill factor is a lot colder, or even if you're going to be doing intervals where you're going to be riding extremely hard for a few minutes that causes your whole body to heat up but then you're going to be slowing down and suddenly you're going to be getting cold again. The same thing for if you're starting early in the morning and you're going to be riding throughout the day you're going to be experiencing a wide range of temperatures. Dressing for those kinds of rides is the most difficult. You need to be dressed for the coldest part of your ride while still being able to complete the rest of your ride without sweating to death or without having so many clothes stacked in your pockets that, that you can barely move. So that is the biggest challenge of all, dealing with the variability. When it comes to winter, this is pretty much everything that I have to work with. Short sleeve vest, some base layers, different lengths, buff, some gloves, shoe covers, shoe covers, jackets, bigger jacket, rain jacket, proper jacket, more gloves. Let's start with what is the simplest of all, the legs. The legs are what are actually producing heat whilst you're riding, so you don't really have to keep them that warm. They do that job pretty much by themselves. You kind of have a few options. You have knee warmers, leg warmers, you even have those sort of leg warmers and, and shorts all in one. In general, a set of leg warmers and normal shorts will, will get you down to pretty much, pretty much freezing temperatures. So where legs are easy, Feet are a little bit more difficult. The thing with your feet is, is they're not really moving whilst you're riding. They're really just sort of sitting in your shoe and just getting nailed by all this cold wind. So they can get really cold really fast. So a good set of, of wool socks really helps, like massively. That was one of the best investments I made for my winter riding. If that's still not good enough, a good set of overshoes like the normal rainy ones you would use, those work really well in keeping your feet that little bit warmer and they just cut the wind that's coming through. If you don't have a set of these then a cheap sort of hack version I guess is take an old set of socks, just any normal socks that you don't like or are starting to get some holes in them and put them over your riding shoes and then cut a little hole in the bottom with a set of scissors, tear it open a little bit so that it fits nice and snugly around the cleat and there you have a perfectly good oversock or overshoe. It'll keep your feet that little bit warmer and it'll keep your shoes that much cleaner in the winter. Next up, let's deal with base layers. I have basically three different kinds of base layers. Super thin, like summer kind of base layer. 
slightly thicker but still maybe summer spring kind of base layer and then a full-on winter long sleeve base layer and this is where variability really comes into it if I'm going for a longer steadier ride no efforts and the temperature is going to be really pretty similar all day I'll go for a long sleeve much thicker like actually warm thermal base layer with that you just kind of slap it on and put on whatever you need over the top and it'll generally keep your core temperature really stable you don't have to worry too much about sweating because you're going to be riding at a really steady speed and if you've got your sort of layers right you should be spot on for me a long sleeve base layer with a good jacket like the Gabba will get me down to pretty much pretty much zero degrees so a good base layer and a good jacket will get you through almost every day in winter. If the temperature is going to be really variable and you're going to be climbing a lot or doing intervals then I'm more for a short sleeve base layer. When you're going super hard in an interval with a long sleeve you tend to get super hot and you really start to sweat and the whole thing can just get wet and when you're chilling afterwards or descending down it gets really cold. So my go-to is usually a short sleeve sort of more summer base layer. But if you're worried about getting cold, then what I do a lot is take a set of arm warmers and put them on with your short sleeve base layer. That allows you to really basically have what feels like a long sleeve on, but is really just a short sleeve. When you finish your descents or you're about to start your intervals, you just pull them off and you're back into a short sleeve base layer and you're gonna sweat a lot less. When you're done, you pull them straight back on and you're ready for your ride down or ready for your ride home. It really does help with that little bit of extra warmth. The key to this whole variable temperature thing is to keep your dressing as modular as possible. You want to be able to take stuff off when you are going hard or when you're going uphill to ensure that you don't start sweating. And when you do have to go downhill or when you're done and you need to ride home, you can just pull it straight back on and stay warm. Let's talk about jackets. When it comes to modular winter clothing, this convertible gabber is the absolute king. Take off the sleeves. Even remove your arm warmer and you're ready for pretty much any climb or any intensity. And if you still have to unzip further, you've got a nice thin summer base layer on. There's no way you're gonna start sweating too much. High quality jackets which are slightly warm but also breathable are quite expensive so if you don't have access to something like this let's talk about what else you can use. In terms of winter jackets I have access to just a normal gilet sleeveless vest, a normal rain jacket, one of those really unbreathable ones and then what is a relatively breathable full rain jacket but not overly warm and thick doesn't have any fleece or anything on the inside so when it comes to riding with these jackets layers is really important normal base layer arm warmers on cycling jersey just for a few extra pockets and just another layer and then what you can go for is the short sleeve vest underneath just another layer to keep the wind off your chest when it is really cold and then the full jacket over the top. Something like this will quite easily get me through uh, a 10 or 15 kilometer descent in two or three degrees. I did it dressed exactly like this a couple days ago. Wasn't insanely warm but I made it down. If you're still cold on top of this then cramming a good normal rain jacket into your back pocket is a really good idea for when you are coming down some hills or you've just finished your intervals it is just another layer to zip on over the top. If it does start to warm up or you start going uphill or something it's really easy to just get all these layers off. That fits nicely into the outside pocket. You can even take this next vest off, get rid of the arm warmers, keep your main jacket on but if it's starting to get warm you can even unzip that, have both of these unzipped. Going uphill you're not going to get overly warm and, and this all fits relatively comfortably into one pocket. Yeah, you're always going to be carrying around extra stuff in the winter, but at least you'll be warm. This is generally what I'll wear when I am tackling some climbs on route or whatever, when I don't want to sweat, but I still have to carry the stuff around. I find you can even pull these 
up if you're getting desperate. The elastic is, is loose enough on mine. Exposing your arms, exposing your hands, and exposing your core will definitely keep you cool going up some of the bigger climbs. And finally, let's talk accessories. The places where you lose the most heat are your head, your hands, and your feet. Your feet you've got covered with a good set of wool socks and either a set of over socks or over shoes or whatever. Your feet are warm. Let's talk about hands and head. Having a nifty little head warmer like this, which also covers your ears, you can put that on for any descents or for any flat freezing ride or, or after your intervals to really just keep that heat in and, and stop, your, stop your body losing too much heat that way. Another good combo is to add a buff. You can really wrap that up nicely around the back, have this cover your, your nose and mouth and, and that really allows you to stay that little bit warmer on the descents. It also takes a little bit of a load off your lungs and just, just warms the air up a little bit as you're breathing it in. And then finally, a set of gloves. There's a lot of different thickness of gloves out there. These are a relatively medium thickness. I find they, they get me down this descent, sort of a 15, 20 minute descent in close to freezing temperatures, and they get me down okay. Slightly thicker would be better, but these are what I've got. So knowing that those are the three areas where you lose the most heat is really important because that is the easiest way to manage your temperatures if you are overheating. Overheating is the worst thing you can do. You'll start to sweat, you'll get all your layers wet, and you will get cold. So what I do is I use those three areas to manage my temperature. Usually your feet is the kind of most difficult thing to, to get your shoe covers or, or whatever off, so those I usually don't touch. I use my hands a lot to regulate my body temperature. Pretty much as soon as I start going uphill, the gloves come off and I'll pretty happily ride without gloves into the low single digits if I am going uphill. I find they really help to, to stop me sweating and, and to keep my core temperature down. And then as soon as you get up to the top, quickly put them back on, put your head warmer back on and your buff, and you're ready to go for your descent. If you don't want to ride without gloves, then think about maybe putting on a really thin set of, of short finger gloves underneath a set of long finger gloves. That should keep you covered for pretty much every eventuality. So when it comes to winter training, you really just need to manage your body temperature. You need to be dressed warm enough so that you are warm during the coldest part of your ride, but you really do not want to sweat if you are riding harder or going uphill. For me, that really means modular dressing so that you can remove everything, unzip whatever you can, and you can really expose your core or your hands or your head or, or whatever it is to really help drop your body temperature when you are riding hard or riding uphill. And when you are done or you're about to descend, to have enough layers to put them all back on quickly so that you are warm for the descent. The quickest way to getting sick and and to just not be healthy throughout the winter is to get cold. You do not want to get cold. And to not get cold, you need to not sweat. I really hope these little things can make your winter riding that little bit more pleasant. You don't have to have access to the most amazing stuff. You don't have to spend a fortune on good winter gear. The stuff is really good and it does help, but layering up and, and being clever and using what you've got can keep you warm in the winter and keep you on the road down to pretty much freezing temperatures. I hope a few of these little tips or tricks really help you keep warm this winter and just let you enjoy your riding that little bit more.